Hello and welcome to podcast 7 of the AG podcast. Uh, I'm here with my co-host D and special guest Big B. Good Hello afternoon. everybody. Uh, episode Hello, 7. Oh, oh. oh, Steve's dropped so quite a bit. Um, yep, it's on the floor now, it's okay, we're finished. <laughs> the food has ended, sorry. Hungry, hungry um, people out there listening. Uh, episode 7 will include season 21. We're coming to the end, so we're going to cover the leagues and the cup. Uh, what happens in the monthly tournament? Uh, what happened in the finale of the Pro Clubs League Wars? Um, going on in the Fantasy League, obviously cover the Xbox One release and how that's gone, even so none of us three actually have it. Um, the Premiership, <laughs> and why well, I will give a little speech on how Portsmouth are doing. Um, the World Cup. Uh, film to three, and we'll finish with the interview with Brian. Um, I'd like to give a little shout out to the new guys on the site. It's uh, Blitzberg from America, uh, Return of Lord Inferno, and General Destro. So, welcome to the site. We missed that last one, your mic was breaking up a bit. Uh, General Destro. Ah, uh, okay. Welcome, welcome, and welcome to the Xbox One. Woo! Woo. No, we don't have it, so it's probably crap. <laughs> yeah, like I said, we'll cover that. Um, <laughs> to that in the session. So, firstly, uh, season 21, uh, League One, or Club League One, sees me currently top by two points, but Aaron's got games in hand. So, hopefully, uh, Aaron can drop points against New York. Yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, so probably. Maybe. Later tonight, maybe. But, uh. I'm on the draw. Yeah, he, he only needs one win to go ahead of you. So, two wins for me, though, will put me uh, only on 30 points. So, I probably don't have much of a chance of winning. But I'd like a, a high place finish at least. So, if I can overtake the, the Tuzzles, senior and junior, that'll do. Well, hopefully, you can jo- help me win the <laughs> so, No. Uh, no favours. Considering that, well, IKEA teammates and good mates in real life, you know, do your body a favour. If he gets the points, though, at least it'll come down to the last game for it. Yeah, true. That would also be more exciting and more tense. I I also would like the golden boot. I'd appreciate that. Looking at this, I've scored the most goals in the league so far, and my defensive record's all right. So uh, The golden boot currently sees Pato and El Nusi top on eight goals and Roberto Firmiro on seven goals so you have two chances there Steve to get the golden ball. I'm quite surprised he's high up like he's that guy he's a good player but uh, I wouldn't have figured him as the strongest finisher but uh, he scored some really good goals for me so uh, and seeing as my striker only has one goal then I definitely needed the rest of them to step up so yeah isn't that amazing you have to say you have contender is Dordovic from Vinci's net. Yeah. The team is Twen- 28 it's goals I've scored, and only one of them has been by a striker. <laughs> uh, it's good to have got good midfielders then. Yeah, very good. Bally Horvich. Oh, <laughs> yeah, me and Steve um, played our club games last week, and Sadiakovic scored a absolute screamer. He did. Um, and. Okay, we're always talking about the bottom of the league, but now it's coming close. We've got uh, the well, relegation battle, quote well, unquote. Asbestos Dog has uh, been found out he's been smuggled in weed. Ah, through so, the side, eh? Yeah, so again, not another drug user, and you're going to get banned, so, you know. Just drugs saying that. Not appreciated. Exactly, we said, this, we said this in the last episode hugs, not drugs. And nobody, clearly, at least one person didn't listen. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just above, so that place is gone now. Above him, we've got uh, Storm, who's currently on 11 points. So he's three points outside the relegation playoff. Um, so I think all the teams, uh, we've got Macadan in seventh. Uh, Ash, surprisingly, behind him, a point behind him in eighth. So well, any of those three can actually still avoid even the playoffs if results go their way. Yeah, but, uh, Rinch, Rinch is on 18 points, so he's only three points. So I'm... Um, Away from that relegation playoff zone. Exactly. He, so he's he gonna, into 
Yeah, he's going to have to win at least one, if not two, of his remaining uh, four games mm. to steer clear. Yeah, so interesting to see how that uh, goes. Both, re- both like win the league and actually survive in the league. Yeah, technically, I can go into the relegation playoffs as well. You could, yeah. It won't go. It won't come to that. We'll have to uh, see what happens there. <laughs> you might get a uh, sucker in. No, <laughs> the black hole of relegation. So we're going to move on to uh, Club League 2 and we have Walsall sitting 4 points clear of Wigsy. Um, Walsall on 35, Wigsy on 31. But Wigsy again has two games in hand and Spud's got four games in hand over the leader sitting on 25 points. So uh, could make a late charge Spud with a uh, whole city. Uh, why? You are in Club League 2 sitting currently ninth. On I've just hit points. form though, mate. Yeah. <laughs> strong. And I haven't played the bottom two yet. Oh, so you could make the playoffs then. You're only eight points off. Right. That's it. And it took me eight games, nine games before I won a game, but <laughs> I've got a solid then, defense, so. It's never and then late you got to two. Hit never, never late to hit form. That's it. Um, yeah, plus two out of the four in the playoffs, so you've got two games over, so. You never no, know. Late push. I figured out how to get my team going at last. Took me half a season. <laughs> like I said, never, yeah. never. Yeah, it can be frustrating having to tinker around with formations and sometimes you, you find a gem of a player in the reserves yeah. that you weren't expecting to find I swapped the centre-forwards there. around and that seemed to work. I dropped one, put the other one in. They were rated the same, but this one I've put in, Lacadia, seems to be a bit better, getting goals anyway. Yeah, I found that can do it. Tim Matfitz. Yeah. yeah, I find that can be a huge thing in uh, this FIFA that if a player you think like um, so for example with Hoffenheim I've I've tried a 4-3-3 with two centre mids but for some reason it just didn't work but then going to a 4-2-3-1 which is hardly any different but having those two players as defensive mids instead of centre mids just for whatever reason they play a lot better and even then they scored more goals so for whatever reason, That's the game. What I've gone for myself with PSV because um, I've got nothing up front really, nothing yeah. class, but I've got a really strong midfield. Yeah, that sounds very similar to, to my guy. So, yeah, for whatever reason, FIFA has decided that players love to play in their proper positions. I think yeah. my two guys are down as defensive mids as opposed to just centre mids, so it definitely helped uh, putting them back, dropping them a tiny bit deeper. So. Uh, the uh, golden boot situation in Club League 2 sees Osh currently top with Eduardo Fargas on 16. A goal behind him is Ida for Welser's Braga on 15. Uh, Czech, Ibiate, I'm probably butchering <laughs> his names for Bordeaux with Wigsy on 13. And Alexander <laughs> Meyer on, for 10 goals for Luis Burr. Uh, yeah, the Cade scored six goals for you, Brian. I don't know how many games he's played for you, but he's, he's definitely only made played about game. six games, I think. If that yeah, averaging goal a game, then that's, that's not, not bad. A bad average. Not a bad average at all. So hopefully, uh, <coughs> he can, since he's finding the net, hopefully you can continue to find the net and shoot your way to the playoffs. That's it. You never know. In the face of a bit of competition, though, you've got Gas Grass and Destroyer, both a few points ahead of you. I'm hoping Gaz has peaked. He's got two <laughs> wins at the start of the season. He's struggled since. He's got five draws, which aren't bad. Only three losses. Yeah. He's, good to, uh, He's hard to beat. I mean, I've got two draws against him. Uh, Rex on the same points as you. And Faraz has got five points. Uh, Rex with three wins. So, yeah, because you only got to play with both Rex and Faraz. I don't know Rex is going to give you a harder game than Ferraz, but Ferraz might peak late as well. So. Let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for your playoffs sake, let's hope not. Um, it seems that for the moment, anyways, Dazzle and Spider got their playoff places tied up, but this is FIFA, you never know what could And then, um, sure, even if you reach the playoffs, uh, whatever's going to happen with the leagues once the Xbox One leagues kick in. Yeah. So you might be you might be automatically put into a a club league one or international league one. Well, there's only one international league anyway. I don't know yet whether there's two divisions or one 
and he was playing on what format. Yeah. That shouldn't deter everyone from trying their darndest to uh, uh, smash everyone else. Oh, well, no, I mean, the higher up the table <laughs> you finish, the more scudo you're going to get. Exactly. So if exactly. you want a good team so. next season, you've got to get up that table. You need a scudo if, if you to get a decent team. <clears throat> so we're going to finish off with the uh, International League one, which we're all in. Uh, I am currently top on 35 points, so I played Steve about an hour ago. And uh, Steve is on 32, so he's Kirby three points did. behind me and two points behind Wilson. Uh, Steve should be on 34. I'll be level on 34, yes. Yeah, yes. Steve should be on 34, but he, uh, I fluked a draw against him in the first game. Hor- horrendous pass from the right centre-back to the left centre-back did me over. And I was just about to kick it back to the keeper, and I didn't think you'd get to it, and then... I put Balotelli through, and 80 Bad, minutes was yeah. too late for me to get a second goal. Balotelli's not going to so, miss from a one-on-one situation, is he? Against yeah. Ruiz as well. And, and it could have made the end of the league a lot more exciting, so we'd have all been on 34 yeah. points, Thierry, uh, Welsa, and myself. Um, goal differences, Lucky. I guess Wayne would have been quite yeah. far Lucky ahead there. He's had goal difference on my side, which would have yeah. helped in the long run. If it came down, I suppose it would. Have, it's been cut down a tiny bit while you're on 19 now, and I'm on plus 11. So another win would have put you on 18, and me on 12. So it would have been tough to claw back. But yeah, but still, a draw for you and Welsa, and two wins for me would put us and would make things a bit different. So I've got Gaz Grass to play in my last couple of games, who's currently in ninth position. Yeah, so and he's. Tr- Trying to well, actually, no one's getting relegated in this league. Thank you. Yeah. I've so. got guest glass as well in my uh, on the game. So in your last two, that's yep. strange. I think so. Okay. No, I've got Osh. I've got three off race Osh. at the yeah. moment. Then I think of it. Yeah, day, I've got Osh in my final game. Um, Ivory Coast, good attack but weak defence. It seems. Um, so I hope we know? keep Drogba, Jiffy, and Yo and Dumbi a quote and should be okay. Do we know who Welsa has in the last couple of games? Uh, I can find out if you give me a sec. In the meantime, Brian, you've got Colombia. How are things yep. for you? Uh, a bit hit and miss. I think when I was looking to get the team, I just looked at how good they were up front with Falcao and Martinez, but didn't realise how bad they were at the back. <laughs> They've got quick defenders, but they're really weak. So you get a big forward. I want to play Gazgrass for Belgium. Lukaku or Benteke. Lukaku, Benteke. We're just walking through my team. So I found out when I played you because Giuseppe Rossi was walking through you. And he's yeah, Balotelli was just barging through. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, I'd like to point out here, uh, Big B has been writing blogs about his both Club League 2 and International 1 um, Yes, matches. very good job. Very good blogs. Um, they're Thank in the press much. room. They're in the press room if you want to read through. So yeah, especially because if you haven't actually played Big B, you might not have been aware because he's been tagging all of us who he's played against in his uh, post-match reports. So uh, they're definitely worth a read. Yeah, I think quite a few people have been reading them as well. And um, it looks like it's inspired Welser to do his um, yeah. season diary Welser's as well. That's a good read. Also, I'd like to point out they're both extremely fair. There's no biased comments in that at all with both Wilson and uh, Big B. So it's good to see they're both equally, equally as fair as they are well written. So congrats to both of you guys. So hopefully other people well, can post a bit more in the press rooms as well. Yeah, the press rooms seem to be a bit quiet at the moment. <coughs> so I'll put the uh, Club League Wars winning press conference <laughs> in earlier which I'll everyone reads my comments sec. I'll come to that in a sec Steve don't worry um, I've been using the podcast really to document my league as such but I might type in next season you know just to get things flowing a bit but yeah people the, uh, in the forums more yeah. and everyone having a having a chat just going to close on the leagues here with the uh, Golden Boot situation. You see Big Ash with Ronaldo and 20 goals. Storm ahead. One man team. <laughs> <laughs> In real life, too, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's uh, only got nine 24. with Danny as well, so I think yeah. he scored 44 goals in total. 
Yeah. Almost half of it for the playoffs. So. Uh, Kafani is second and 14 for Storm. Big B, you're third with Falcao. Who's been yeah, that's a one man team. <laughs> Falcao. Iron Robin's also on 11 for Wince, and I'm on 10 goals with Balotelli. Also got 9 for Giuseppe Wotum. It's been quite a lethal force. And Sergei with 8. Wow. I'm I didn't know they've got that many goals, to be perfectly honest. My goals are clearly evenly distributed amongst my team because, you know, I am scoring goals. <laughs> should be there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you are nine goals with Ribery and six for both Ben Sima and Giroud. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed I haven't played Giroud since the start. I've only played him in the last six or so matches, but uh, this 3-5-2 is working well, so it's a shame it, it took me halfway into the season to start giving it a go. Was, yeah, Giroud's been great. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll play that actually. Better Teddy's now in 11 because he scored one earlier. And, and Ribery Giroud's and on plus one. Yeah, Giroud's on seven and Ribery's on ten. Hey. So, but, has yeah. Giroud's form gone up then as the stats have got better for him? They don't actually in the international league. It only comes yeah. in the club sides, does it? Yeah, yeah. but the, his uh, club form has gone really well. He's gone up, I think he's on plus two at the moment for Arsenal. Plus two or plus three. I haven't checked the latest stats, but... Yeah, in the club league, I've got a Dutch team, so the form doesn't come into it for that league. Same with Brazil, actually. Yeah. I've got Corinthians, and I don't get affected by it. It seems to be the yeah. English, the French, the Germans, and the Italians that are affected, and the Spanish that yeah. are affected. Yeah. And so that might actually end up being a factor, I guess, in the next team that people bid on, because as much as the team looks good when you go to buy it, if they're doing well in the league, you're going to get all these boosts as well. So I uh, found out uh, Steve Hoffenheim. Yeah, Hoffenheim have been down every single week that I've had them, I think. Like, uh, by, by their best player, it seems that Kevin Volland does no wrong in the German league and he's constantly on an 80 overall, but uh, like my striker's constantly, I think, down from 76 to 72 and you know, other players down from 74 to 70 and you know, some of my best defenders I find in the reserves are like on the 68 instead of a, a mid-70. So uh, it's been tough, but uh, they're still doing okay. Can't complain too much. It's something that I don't think anybody really thought about when buying teams, so it'd be something that yeah. people will factor in in the next auction. Um, right, so we're going to now look at the Cups in Season 21. Uh, last time we talked about the uh, Club League Cup, it was at the quarterfinals, so we'll see what happened there. Uh, Tossa Jr. beat Osh, uh, Aaron beat Macadam, Wells beat Free, and Big B, oh, Louis Bird beat Big B. Uh, how did you two get on in your quarterfinals? I was just happy to be there. <laughs> I've come through the hard route, I didn't get a bye in the first round. Yeah, see, yeah. You so I scraped Slovnik. through against Slovnik and then um, I beat Faraz 1-0 and I was lucky. So, yeah, against yeah. Luis who beat me. So, Luis Bird yeah. was a bit of a dark horse in your club cup. That's it. He did well. I uh, I can't claim to remember my game at Welsa at all. <laughs> so, blocked it from or? the memory. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I've yet to beat him on the site, but I've been playing better against him and getting a bit unlucky, I guess. I had a, I suppose we'll come to the monthly tournament in a bit, but he was my most recent opponent in that. Um, but yeah. So the uh, semi saw uh, Aaron beat Tozza Jr. and Relsa beat Louis Spur, and the final saw Aaron beat Relsa, so congrats Aaron on winning the Cup League Cup. Another trophy put on the mantelpiece. He's going to need another mental piece at this point. He probably just chucks them. He probably just chucks them all at the back of the, in a box or something by this stage. Oh, He's got I've too many. Got, I've already got four of these, you know. <laughs> um, and the International Cup saw the finals of me versus Storm, and I won. I think it was 2 1 or 1 0. I think it's 1 0 actually. Um, so yeah, I won. Yay. Congratulations. Um, Happy to come out with a trophy to oh, well done. Thank you very much. Why uh, right, right. right, you lost in the first round to Osh? Sorry to announce that. Yeah, I was just concentrating on the league with that one. Oh, fair. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> uh, Steve, you yes, had the first round game as well against the Lost, so you had to fight the long way through. Um, 
Yeah, and then you beat me. Yep, I came against me, you know. Yeah. And again, if, I, if only the three five two had been in use, I think I played a four three three against you, and uh, poor defending. Saw you over. Saw you pull back one goal twice, and then overtake me. Yep. Oh well. So, I, uh, fun I'm a trier. I'm like that competitive guy who's really annoying. He's never going to win, but uh, you don't want to have to play me mm. if you're aiming to win. So, so <laughs> I'll get there eventually. Improving slowly. <laughs> I'm going to swiftly move on to the uh, monthly tournament. Uh, we've went to the knockout stage. Uh, in the first room in the quarters, we saw we also beat Big Ash. Three beat Briar. Oh, so that's, that'd be something to talk uh, about. That's a uh, tale to tell. Uh, Rince beat Spud <laughs> and Faraz beat Rigsy. Uh, Brian, Steve, do you want to discuss your game? If you can yeah, it was... It was the longest series of matches I think in the history of AG so far. So never knows. Yeah, yeah, lots of chances, not so much any of them taken. But um, I guess everyone knows now that you go into a golden goal, and um, if you draw the first match in a cup game, so we drew the first match nil all, and then we drew the second match nil all, and so we had to do two full games, and then in the third game I got a corner, and I scored, and that was it. A very anticlimactic end. Yeah. Uh, not, not a way someone wants two to Two good games as well. It wasn't... I mean, no, yeah. no plenty of chances. Yeah, of course, neither of us are defensive or anything. We, we had our chances, just the uh, kind of players that you're using. Sometimes they rifle them in from outside the box, and other times they just kind of pass it at the keeper. Yeah. So they're, they're very hit and miss. Uh, fair play. Uh, I think I remember seeing your post about it before when I was reading it. I was like, I'd like to have seen that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, actually, yeah, that's interesting you say that. I don't know why FIFA doesn't do it, but surely there has to be some kind of viewing thing, you know, for the next FIFA where, say, like a maximum of ten people can actually just watch two other people play a match. I think that'd be a great. Well, uh, so that would be, like, we'll discuss a bit of that in Xbox One when it comes down to it. Yeah, yeah. Twitch streaming. Um, and uh, yeah, the semi. Yeah. Semi-finals, yeah, I lost to Welsa yet again. First match, we had to do golden goal once again. I was winning 3-1 in the first match, and uh, he pulled it back to 3-3. Um, we both got two kind of lucky goals. I got a, a deflection to make it 3-1, and uh, I'm pretty sure something about his goal to make it 3-2 was a tad fortunate. And yeah, then he got the equaliser with a good finish. And then in the second match, another corner. And even just as he got the corner, I was like, oh, he's going to score here, isn't he? And, yeah, corners are, are a bit, I think, in favour of the attacker in this one. So, mm. so yeah, so he got the golden goal victory. So, uh, fair play to him. So, either Wince or Faraz in the second or in the final, even. They've uh, still arranged and they've been arranging for God knows when. They've been arranging for about a week. And yeah, well, Faraz has... Played, uh, yeah, Faraz, yeah, he's in uh, Karachi in Pakistan, so yeah. He's to, five hours ahead of everyone, so mm. it's not easy for him to arrange times. Yeah, we're all on work by he's he's having yeah. his downtime, so I doubt he likes sure. playing at two in the morning for him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or whatever, like two in the morning for us when he's waking up for to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll get arranged and he'll be played and we'll cover that in the next uh, podcast. Uh, next is the Pro Cup League Wars. Uh, I keep in. I keep in. <laughs> uh, Want to say it one more time? I keep in. <laughs> yeah. um, it was a good. It was a good league. I liked the uh, the format of it. It's different as well. It's unique. You won't. You know, you play one team each week, or you play two teams. Yeah. The team each week. Well, goes into a league tables. You gain points from separate leagues and it will add up. It was a nice unique yeah. format for it. It was good knowing that there was an overall thing instead of kind of just each week there was a competition just having a winner that week. You know, so you could and win within the week but even dropping a few points then could make a difference for the overall thing. So yeah, it was a good good addition to the site. Yeah, you made every night count. Oh, well. And obviously it's proven on the last night because we were Three points ahead of Trompton Town, and they didn't turn up for whatever reason. Which no, we had uh, no one to play really because um, just before Xbox One launched, everyone, um, well, all those that were getting the Xbox One traded in their FIFA 14s. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So they went and sold it early before the price went down. So. 
Newcastle either. Uh, left us really needing just one win out of two games and we mostly geared it against the BFL lads and won us to lead. That's all she wrote. Yeah. AG finished second on 24 points. Trompton Town third on 22. BFL lads on 12. AG went out fifth with nine points. And I club AG sadly couldn't participate due to times. They're all... They're all bats or something, so they only wake up at night time. Vampires. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vampire bats. <laughs> um, we're looking to get a Pro Club Steak one in next season, so hopefully that can be arranged if we can get back into the Spirit Clubs. So, but hopefully, also, we need to all see you, the AJ community, to sign up, get teams together, and get involved. So. Maybe we can get that going and also get a new f- yeah, f- f- new teams going as well. Or we can teams in from yeah. the uh, FIFA community. It will be awkward with the whole transition to the Xbox One and people half the people have the console and half the people don't. But uh, I'm sure eventually we'll all be in the stage where everyone has an Xbox One. So. Mm. And hopefully <coughs> we'll be back in clubs. Banter, a banter, a hoy. Exactly. All on the banter bus. Um, speaking of banter... <laughs> uh, I'm going to read out uh, Steve's little uh, press conference speech. <laughs> considering uh, he, he did write this himself, um, all words that I'm about to say are Steve's own words, no thought from any of these other IKEA teammates. <laughs> um, I've got away with words, I do. Yeah, uh, it simply reads, Bye for your no more. If everyone could be a tad less shit, that would be great. We've made an agreement in the club to fully play manual and with only four fingers each, so some other team can have more of a competitive second place finish. You all seem modesty, free to say no more. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm <laughs> going to get abused on the press conference, and I'm sure you'll back you up with we've got the trophy. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just trying to trying to make it more competitive. Try fuel the flames of that competitiveness, so everyone there. Uh, have a good club league war next time. I'm gonna fuel the fire <laughs> to burn up Boston. Keep it on earth. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm just glad that we played small football in the end. And <laughs> the <league>. Oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> really Moving it. on. Really Through the it. fantasy. I'm just backing. I'm just backing video. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Right, so the fantasy league uh, this week, I I I did not get most points. I thought I did, but I didn't. It turns out Faraz got the most points, eighty-two points this week. So there you go. What he's, I got. What he's not seven. doing in the uh, in the leagues himself, he's making up for in the fantasy. League. Yeah, he has I, Rooney as captain, which will win him twenty-two points. Go on, Steve. I apologise for interrupting like three times now. <laughs> I constantly just have an average week every week. I'm either a slightly below average or slightly above it. So I did make the inspired move to make Remy my captain, seeing that they were playing Norwich. And but of course I left uh, DJ or not DJ Fraser Campbell on the bench. I thought I'd left him on the team, but I must have gone. Oh look, they're playing Manchester United. Maybe he won't score. But uh, of course, people always score against their own clubs, don't they? So yeah. that would have been good for an extra eight points over, say, someone like Deja and Lovren or Torre, who both got zero, which is great. I do have one Aston Villa player to play, Baker, in defence. I don't know if he plays. So uh, He does, if he's still. I think he's a first-team okay. player, but I'm not too sure. Uh, I've got Shea Given if to play, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to play, so no. go on, Brad. Uh, I had Jose Fuente, who obviously conceded goals and got nothing. I had Fatongan, who got a whitewash. <laughs> I had a choice between the Sabalero and Fatongan. I stupidly chose Fatongan and he played. Uh, we'll, get to, we'll get to Spurs in a bit. Um, I had also, luckily though, I had Lampard, who scored both goals against West Ham, and Jude and Lukaku both backed themselves two goals in the games that they played in the weekend. I did get 53 points in my good team, though. So th- that team just keeps on providing. I did get minus two with someone. What the hell did he do? Who? Some Fulham player. Minus one for a yellow card. Oh, he scored no goal. Uh, there we go. <laughs> um, 
But I had Aguero up front and Suarez as my captain, who were good for uh, 33 points between them. That's not bad. It's a shame that we played Southampton because Ricky Lambert was bound to have got a goal against another team. That would have been perfect yeah. if they all got like 10, 13 points each. But it to be. If only I had one of them as my captain as well, I'd have banned him. Either. Yeah, I think I think uh, Aguero or Negredo as captain is the way to go at the moment, especially when uh, Manchester City are playing at home. See their next match is against Swansea. So Swansea are decent, but I don't think they travel too well. So uh, yeah, so Aguero or Negredo as captain seems to be the way to go at the moment. There was it Aguero has 14 goals in 11 games, and I think Negredo scored in six out of six home games in a row. So mm, well. No doubt. Well, if, basically, if City play at home, put a City player as captain. If City play in the way, then don't. Yeah. Um, oh, what other tips do we have? Liverpool are against Hull away from home. Suarez or Sturridge up front would be a good bet there. And um, against Cardiff. Yeah. Well, Cardiff are proven that they're they're tough to play against. Um, so, well, the, Arsenal should probably still it. get the best of them. Hopefully. We've also got uh, Spurs and Man United. I suppose that's the big game of uh, next week. So, I'll be uh, taking Fatonga now just in case. Yeah, points-wise, it's tough. Wise. I think you only get points off Man United if you've got Van Persie or Rooney. I had Carrick in my one of my teams for a while, and he just wasn't getting any points. That's so maybe I thought, because he's injured at the moment, see? Yeah, because you're... Well, yeah, that too. But just in general, he doesn't assist or score much. He's also very cheap, which is why. And Spurs probably aren't worth having any of their players in because they can't score or defend, apparently. So best to just leave all the Spurs players out. Mm, we have a for Tongue Union is because he got himself quite a few goals for our season. So yeah, the first defensive goals. Um, <laughs> top three in the Fantasy League sees Ferres take top spot after his 82 point haul. Uh, Ash Cohn in second, seven points behind Ferez, and third place is Matt Osborne, a point behind Ash Cohn. Uh, I am four points of Craig, who was our second special guest, or our first special guest on like, the second show, ten points behind Bry. I must be doing badly because you're catching up quickly. <laughs> I want 550, you want 560. I had a 14 point gain over you this week so I've not changed my team for two weeks both Saturdays I thought oh I must change my fantasy <laughs> league team and then by the time I get around to doing it I've forgotten about the early kickoff <laughs> and it's I've, too I've gotten yeah I've gotten slightly better each year I've played it like lasting a bit longer I think the first time I ever did it I probably lasted less than half the actual season and then just forgot to change my team but now I managed to get I got past January last year before I think Hitting kind of the end of March and April, I just wasn't paying attention. But this year, I think I might get a whole season in. This one team I have has 662 points, so uh, they're worth keeping up with. In oh, the top team out, uh, uh, well, I just, just quickly now. You've got checking goal, Sabletta, Ivanovic, Fidic, and Walker in defence. Yeah, and I left got... Matt Sacker on the bench. Mm, yeah, Walker oh, got man. minus two as well. Yeah. Uh, no. Hazard. Osman and Ramsey in midfield. Hassel was your captain, got you 20 points. Yeah. yeah. Osman and, played in. Yeah, he got one point. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Ramsey got three. And, well, Osman played three minutes, which put him one point. And so I finally got Edin Desco, Storage, and Berbatov. Yeah, I think it might be nearly yeah. time to um, play the wild card. Yeah, yeah. that's still available. So. Yeah, because Jekyll yeah. and Berbatov have got to go. They're just not getting the points. Yeah, well, Berbatov's probably playing, but Fulham just aren't a good team, and uh, Jekyll's definitely back in the He's, pecking order behind yeah. Negredo and Aguero. So only if one of them gets injured, I think, should you consider Jekyll. I think I've probably. been changing a forward every other week because I started with Boney. But he wasn't getting the goals, so I put yeah. Van Volswinkel in. And uh, he got injured. He also wasn't scoring. <laughs> so then Berbatov's in and he yeah. stopped scoring. I guess the informed strikers at the moment are Suarez and Aguero, I think. Uh, yeah. I'll probably storage because I couldn't afford Suarez, so I thought yeah. second best. Um, Frazier Campbell's quite a good one for uh, 
for a kind of cheap striker, it's always good to look at the strikers in the kind of lower teams, like who's going to score the most goals. And it looks like Campbell's going to be their top scorer for the year. So uh, maybe depending on who Cardiff are playing. Well, I'm saying that he scores against United, so I guess it doesn't really and matter. City. Play. Go against City as well. Yeah, so if he's worth like whatever he is, five and a half, five point eight, maybe he's up to six now. But uh, he's definitely worth having in there as a cheaper option, and then you can pick one of the more expensive strikers as well. Yeah, I did think about putting Lambert up front, but I wouldn't be able to live with myself. <laughs> that, that'd be like basically stabbing the, the knife through your heart. That, that'd be it, yeah. yeah. I'd take no pleasure out of getting top points with him. Points, yeah. <laughs> That's like when I have a player on my team when they're playing against Liverpool, and I, kinda, I don't really want to have him there. I think I had Berbatov on one of my teams when he scored a hat-trick against Liverpool a couple <laughs> of years ago, so I begrudgingly took those points. I was like, well, if something good's going to come of losing... 3-0 to a Ber- Berbatov bicycle kick score in Hatter, then uh, I guess it's fancy league points. That's all I can get. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to move now to the Xbox One. Um, basically, the massive... It came out Friday. Uh, congrats to Microsoft, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's a bunch of games. Been. It's like 12 games, I think, they came out with it. Um... Some of them are already released on the Xbox 360, so I don't know. Yeah, I guess 14, the likes of Rise and Four is a Five were the exclusives. Yeah, I think it's FIFA 14 and Assassin's Creed. I think were the only two that came out in the 360 before, and, and Ghosts and Battlefield. Actually, Ghosts. now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> so that just doubled the amount of games then. Yeah, I did. I did a good thing, and they just popped into my brain. So it's a good idea. If, if anybody, nobody's talking about it, and I don't know why, but if anyone's gotten a uh, Peggle Two. Peggle <laughs> or, uh, or the Xbox One and I hear you laughing yes but if you haven't played Peggle you just don't know you just your comments are void because those of us who play Peggle who was it Magoo yeah, if, Magoo, if, yeah. if you have an Xbox One please do a little ride up for Peggle too, and you can tag me in it and I uh, will chat about how great it is because it's the cool. experience it being in HD Probably, and also if there's any connect things, you know, maybe you can fire off the balls in the game with your hands or something instead of using a controller, like the Stone Age. Oh, he's put way too much thought into this team. I think you should get a job for um, <laughs> Singa, I think, that makes games. So. Nah, pop, yeah, PopCap, those yeah. Uh, the masters of Xbox Live arcade games. If anyone's played Plants vs. Zombies, it's the same company, so... Uh, that gives you an idea of the kind of... It's laid back and it's nice and relaxing. And, uh, you know, it's the type of game I can get away with playing while my girlfriend's here. She goes, oh, look at this. This is fun. I'm like, yes, but I still get to play games. So it works like that. Yeah, cause we were looking forward to, you know, the TV, the Twitch TV streaming capability, which has sadly been delayed till 2014. But uh, okay. Steve's already got one viewer for his Peggle channel in the form of Magoo. <laughs> and you can use this time, Steve, to advertise your Peggle channel if you want. Yeah, well, it's going to be there. So uh, everyone sign up. Um, Subscription is going to be about €20. Euro. It's a premium premium channel. Only premium games being played. So the effect that get, it, get in there fast. I'll do, I'll, I'll do an early bird for uh, 15 99 <laughs> Worth the money to watch Peggle live. Yeah. Exactly. See, Brian knows plus, here. I'm plus, I'll commentate while I'm doing it, and you can. Like, say you you, you can't Irish for you can't Irish voice commentating. You can't do better than that. I'm Peggle, yeah. And if you ever heard me squeal while playing FIFA, then just multiply that by ten when uh, my Peggle shot knocks every peg in the one go, and I get in that little bucket at the bottom as well. That's where all the big money comes in. So it'll Which be like the Sid them. Waddell of Peggle. Pardon? It'll be like Sid Waddell. <laughs> exactly. I think I'm going to turn on my Xbox right now and start playing Peggle. If you hear uh, what was it, Ode to Joy in the background, then you'll know that I've just scored big. Oh, will you do that? I'm going <laughs> to keep going about the Xbox One. Um, also, yeah, I'll, I'll chat a bit. That's okay. Connect 2.0 is also about um, recognize his face and voice and stuff. And sure. Well, I would say you've been practicing your Xbox One voice, but Steve, it's not happening in Ireland, is it? Yeah, yeah the, the whatever Xbox on, Xbox off, Xbox blah 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 does not work. But the the in game things work. One of the, a friend Kratos, who's on the side, plays in our club, um, has Dead Rising, and he said that the voice commands worked for the game. So it's just not with the console. 
at the yeah, moment. So it's basically Microsoft don't like the Irish for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, I, I was finding it surprising software that... for the accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what we're discussing in the uh, party chat. Uh, I've got I've got a pretty pretty mellow accent compared to you know other places in Ireland. Demon, so uh, especially Demon, neither. Yeah, so he's from uh, the Um. But yeah, I always find it surprising that we don't just get all the access that the UK does. You know, I pretty much think the rest of the world thinks Ireland is a part of the UK anyway. So uh, obviously the people of Microsoft are too knowledgeable and realize that we're a different country and decide to uh, give us different access. Because even things like the Xbox Live indie games, um, Ireland didn't have for the 360. Not that many games came out of that that were worth playing. But, um, yeah, just little things like that. I'm always surprised that we don't get uh, no access to 4 OD either. So that's annoying. That sucks. Probably all due to paying extra money for extra licenses for different countries. Isn't yeah. It? Well, our, yeah, the one thing that we got was RTE player. So our national broadcaster over here is uh, RTE. So, uh, but there's not, not worth much worth watching on there. They do show the Champions League, though, which is something I don't think... They show more than ITV does anyway, so... That's, I guess that's one positive out of it. Yeah, that, that's about all we get, though. So. Of the other features, or have you spoke about the games? Um, the or graphics. we just have to wait a couple of months afterwards, after you guys get something, and then we get it. I've seen the uh, graphics for some of the games, they look sexy as hell. All the light. Yeah, like Dead Forza, License Forza. is meant to have them. Real amount of zombies on screen at any one time. So I've seen the. F- I'm hope to be getting my Xbox One this Friday. Hopefully, if if, we, if everywhere hasn't sold out by then. Um, and Forza and Dead Rising will be my first two games I'll be getting. Um, because Forza, I wasn't a big fan of Forza on the 360, but I've seen what they've done with Forza Five, and it looks amazing. So I'm gonna be getting that. And Dead Rising Three also looks equally as good. So I've been looking to get that as well. Uh, I've seen a bit of gameplay for Dead Rising 3. The amount of zombies that were in there is ridiculous. Yeah. Brian, did you win the uh, the steering wheel? I did. Very it's on its way to me today, apparently. So, Is that just for use with the 360 or can you use it with the Xbox One? Oh, I don't know. As far as I know, it's just for the 360, which I've still got anyway. So I'll not be nah. getting my Xbox One for a while yet. Uh, okay. Do you have so, any driving games? Oh yeah, I'll be back on Grid Two and Forza Horizon, sitting here looking like an idiot with a spirit filling my hands. It sounds like this. We, we're, we're very sad that we don't have Twitch TV, so we can watch you. Yeah, right yeah. Around in your, in your can you do it? Can you do it and make sound effects and stuff? Well, I know there's sounds that come off the game, but if it's just you with the steering wheel, it'll just add to it. It's like, I'm and sure then crash. I'll be sitting down. there yeah. leaning over to think it will turn the car quicker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So make sure you're doing that by yourself, boy. Otherwise, you might get the, uh, the old mental side and yes, yeah, that locked me up. Boats. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say about this. What's one apart from uh, hopefully we can get plenty of events done for that, as we usually do at AG, and uh, hopefully community joins in and helps us build the Xbox Xbox One. That's, that is the future of gaming. Well, everyone on the chat room have been raving about how much better FIFA is on the Xbox One. So. That is true, yeah. Yeah, That's I think it's supposed different. to be a bit smoother and... Quicker and... A bit quicker, yeah. No clubs, though, from the sound of things. So. Yeah, we've heard that uh, clubs is currently broken along with co-op seasons. So hopefully FIFA can get that... Or EA can get that fixed ASAP. Always, always nice the way EA ensures that there's no fault with Ultimate Team. Mm. The the money spinner, oh, the money maker, always, oh, no, no. yeah, always functions as smoothly as you like. Though every now and then I do get it tells me that the Ultimate Team servers aren't available, but all it does is kick you back to the main area, and then you just have to re-enter the. Uh, usually, it's when I'm looking in the the transfer market or the transfer lists that I get kicked out, but then it just works again straight away. So it's just an odd glitch. They usually also um, only ever see maintenance on Ultimate Team servers, but they're on Pro Club servers or Season servers. Or, yeah. You know, online friendlies, etc., etc. So, yeah. We know, yeah. That, we know that EA pay for their on their. Uh, <laughs> people. Yeah, well, sure, clubs and all don't change very much from one year to the next. So, just now, in, now instead, you've got to pick your team from the top to the bottom. Instead of goalkeeper being at the top, that's about all yeah, they did. I'm sure, I'm sure that, that was a lot of time spent on that change. Yeah. 
they probably leave the intern in the club's room and he's in charge of making sure it looks fine while the rest of the main staff are in the ultimate team room yeah. trying to right. figure out how to make more money. Yeah, I, I know. Let's put in all the players from the 60s and 70s. That'll work. Yeah, that'd be fine, yeah. Let's give them stupid ratings so they go for like 12 million points. Yeah. Which I'm sure, I'm so, I can't remember who put it up on the shower box, but I know somebody put, said that Rude Gill going for 12 well, million coins. Us. Aaron said about Van Nistelrooy going for 8 million coins. So, just, wait, just wait till Pele hits the market. Yeah, I was going to say Pele's going to yeah. go for a good 15 million, I think, if that's how the market is at the moment. I can't imagine spending that one, like, that amount of coins on just a single player. Like, I've never even had a million coins on Ultimate Team. I'm very unlucky with the packs that I get, I think. The most I ever got, I got two informed players in one pack last FIFA, but they were Mar- Mark Schwarzer and some, you know, random defender. So I think they only went for, you know, 10K. 20, 30 odd thousand between them. So that was the most. Uh, I don't think I've ever had an informed player all the years I've been playing it. Yeah. Uh, I've had three, but they've all gone for like 10k each. So. Yeah. yeah. I got I got better players before the game even got released. I got Vincent Company and Peter Cech just in the packs on the Ultimate Team web app. And so that actually gave me like 40,000 odd coins to start off with, which is probably the reason why I have the German and Brazilian teams I have at the moment. But that's about it. Uh, I'm struggling to build up coins. And of course, every time I get over 7,500, I just go buy a gold pack. In the hopes I get something good. Uh, I never build it up that much. Uh, I wanted to save from Marcelo for my Brazilian team, and I just haven't bothered. So I'm going to quickly enter this. Uh, EA have announced a spotlight for legends. Where each week, a legend will be in the spotlight, and you get more chance of finding that legend than any other legend in packs. Mm-hmm. That starts that's every Friday at 6 p.m. They announce the new legends. I thought I'd throw that in there for the Armour Team junkies. To- okay. Want to hunt for that special legend? So keep everyone break out the break out the credit card and get your FIFA points. Yeah, that's what everyone's been waiting for. The market's crashed currently. So everyone's just opening packs. I'm on packs. I'm on packs. Finding that uh, one legend that will make them rich or make their team ever stupidly good. And people are trying to trade their teams over to the Xbox One version as well. So they're selling off certain players and stuff like that. So. I've heard some players have dropped by like 10,000 odd for some of them, so. Yeah, like Cafani was at like 80, 90k, and they've like 20k, I think I remember seeing or hearing. So that shows you how, you know, how big the market can crash if enough yeah. people are buying. Economics, yeah. they're yeah. important. Installation, etc., etc. Then we move on to uh, yeah, real life football, um, starting first with the Premiership. Uh, I was partying at my birthday on Saturday, so I, I don't really know what happened on Saturday. Um, Saturday started off with, uh, I think, what some people are calling one of the best Merseyside derbies in kind of recent memory. It was a three all draw. Yeah, I know um, the score. I know the catch yeah. two for Everton. I know there's some big incident with Morales and Suarez. Yeah, Morales. I'll let, uh, I'll let you take that, Steve. Cause, yeah, yeah, Morales should have been sent off. Morales challenge was worse than what Rooney did like Rooney deserved a red card merely because he kicked him off the ball but uh, this was you know supposedly a tackle but if you put it into context as well just before Suarez got tackled he was actually hobbling a bit and the commentators pointed out that he was struggling and he looked to have a bit of an injury and then you know two minutes later when he's still on the pitch Morales absolutely goes through him so a really cynical challenge knew exactly what he was doing trying to trying to force him off the pitch but uh Suarez lifted his leg up and Morales came through the side and just his boots pretty much went right into the side of where his kneecap is and uh, completely took him out. And the referee spent the next three, four minutes just trying to stand there and tell players to stop talking to him before making a decision. Um, And it should have been a red, but uh, he bottled it, as a lot of refs do in big situations when they don't want to upset managers or players. And he gave me a yellow card. Um... So, and then, yeah, three all draw. Everything were looking good for the win. They were having a lot of shots, and Mignolet was doing his best to keep them at bay. He saved once from uh, Delif. I don't know how to pronounce that guy's yeah, name, the little Spanish. Uh, Delif, yeah, Delif. Who, and then an even better save from Lukaku, who uh, went through on goal as well. But uh, yeah, Lukaku got his two goals, but then 
Sturridge came on for the last 15 minutes and in about the 88 minute Jared swung in a free kick which uh, Sturridge gladly headed in and then both teams had chances actually Suarez had a good volley save by Tim Howard and um, then Everton were kind of knocking it around just inside the Liverpool box but uh, when the shot came in it was blocked and it went out probably for a corner but the ref called full time so 3 all. I'll take a point Goodison Park's a, a tough place to go to so uh, I know Arsenal won 2 0 against Southampton. Uh, Jury took both goals. Uh, yeah. I think it was a penalty. No idea if it was or it wasn't. So I can't comment. I think um, it was, yeah. And um, Arthur Borch with an absolute howler. Oh my God. It was the weekend for goalkeepers making mistakes. He just. Did you see it at all? Nope. Yeah. Um, he I thought think... he was Bruce Grobbler and tried to dribble backwards and forwards, didn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> fair, fair enough. He had it, it got passed back to him. He had it on his right foot. He tried to switch it to his left foot. Then Drew started to close him down. He switched it back to his right foot. He tried to knock it behind him to get it back onto his left foot once again. And Drew just tackled him simply and just hit it in. And then I think Barr spent a minute or so first being annoyed with himself and then going to the referee, possibly trying to say that it was a foul when it clearly wasn't. It was a, just a good bit of press, pressurizing from um, Drew. So I'm sure Southampton had a few chances in between, but um, Arsenal good for another win, and I think now they're uh, five points ahead at the top. Four points, four points four ahead points. of you. Yeah. So um, you and Southampton, I think, are still on twenty-four points. So. Yeah, surprising actually seeing as Chelsea and Man City won, but uh, they're probably third and fourth. Oh, no, Chelsea, Chelsea on twenty-four points, Southampton on twenty-two. Fourth and fifth, even. Yeah, and then the big match, big match was Man City. Um, yeah. Pumping Spurs six yeah, nil. Spurs uh, did not turn up to get in uh, yeah. in Yeti Dad Stadium. They, uh, Commiserations to uh, Louis Spur and Storm, who are obviously Spurs fans. But yeah. on the bright I'm side, sure, the Premier uh, League is a Mickey Mouse Cup, so you've got the Europa League to look forward to. So yeah. you can take. That. <laughs> yeah, cause the Champions League is also a Mickey Mouse Cup, and I've been the Champions League. So yeah, good luck on everyone. Knows five, the Europa notes. League is where the. Where the prestige is at. Yeah, Channel 5 and ITV4 all the way. <laughs> and I'll beat you in Chelsea, maybe ESPN. Thursday Night Football for the win. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, 6 0. Spurs, Spurs haven't impressed me at all this season. They Their yeah, players should have had enough time to get in. They've only spent 100 million, Steve. You know. Yeah, only. Shows you, though, how much of a one man team they were now that Bale's gone, you know? Um, he was creating everything, he was scoring the goals. Um, so, so that up front, just I, I, I liked him while he was at Valencia, but um, he's either not playing well and adjusting to the Premier League, or he's not getting the service into what them. I think. Yeah. Penalties to score. <laughs> a match of the day yesterday highlighted how narrow Spurs were. So even with the likes of Lennon, he keeps on cutting inside, even when he's played on the right. And uh, so that has been forced to drop too deep to pick up the ball. Whereas I think. Uh, what was the stat? I think the 56 goals he scored for Valencia, only one of them was from outside the box. So that kind of says it all about what type of striker he is and what kind of service he needs to actually score goals. So You think with players like Eriksson and Lamella coming in, you'd get that service but Yeah, well again, Lamella was played on the left and of course being right-footed and not an actual winger, his... Uh, thing was to come inside, so Spurs obviously really need their fullbacks to be bombing it down to give them that width. But uh, it wasn't happening against City, and City were just ruthless after they scored their kind of second goal because there was a big gap. They scored in the first minute, and then the second goal was until the 34th. I think they got their third just before half time, and then second half started much the same. And also, yeah, it started off with a. Uh, but they scored after 15 seconds. I think it's the fastest goal of the season. Yeah. Uh, the ball went back to Lloris. And yeah, he tried to... The ball. Like, Cabal was a bit of a sleep. He uh, slayed off to Cabal, who could... Oh, no, later to, to Lloris, who... Lloris couldn't find a Spurs shirt when he kicked it out for enough no money. Well, he, he just kicked think, it flat on the ground. Yeah, I so. think half the Tottenham goals actually came from Lloris clearing it to a City player. Yeah. Sure that, no. well, I know in all there. fairness, though... Jesus Navas still had loads to do and it was such a good finish. Like I'd heard he tipped him from the edge of the box, but when you see the angle and the yeah, way he... It was a ridiculous uh, angle. I watched the game and it was stupid. Yeah. It was a 5-0 and my mum, who's a Spurs fan as well, turned it off in disgust. <laughs> so. um, and that was his first goal in the Premier League and then he, he finished it off by scoring in the 90th minute as well. Another good finish, so... 
Um, and then Man United. Yeah, uh, Man U. Uh, Rooney's. Uh, Rooney. Rooney's a dangerous tackle on Jordan. Much yeah, he just kicked the back of his legs. It was. It was kind of typical Rooney. It's something he's done before. And again, the ref. Pretty sure he had a full yeah. view of it, and he That's only gave it yellow. Yeah, the referee, um, your, your decision. Rooney said, it, that, uh, Rooney said on Twitter that the ref handled it. So there's, no, there's no blame on him, basically, what he's saying. But he shouldn't yeah. have lashed out at much like that. But and I guess... Then, of course, I'm supposed to I can say that. Can say United's problem uh, is just not holding on to leads. I think that's twice now. First against Southampton, and now against Cardiff, where they've uh, conceded a goal in the 90th odd minute. So, um, like the United of old would have would have seen the game out, or they they would have scored that extra goal to give themselves a cushion. Or also, they would have scored that chance that Rooney had when Rooney decided to try and uh, square it to Welbeck. He could have shot, or if he had hit it a bit harder, um, the Cardiff goalkeeper wouldn't have gotten to it. But uh, that was exactly the type of goal that United under Ferguson used to score. So uh, I think uh, Moyes needs to recapture that soon. And um, for uh, Rooney to only get booked and then score the first goal of the game. Yeah, <laughs> and off a deflection as well, wasn't it? Wasn't a great finish. Also, a quick uh, mention of Wes Brown's horrendous tackle that got him sent off the third <laughs> uh, yeah. I heard that the referee blew it in that game as well. Basically, yeah. it was a weekend of the keeper holders and referee not doing just their job. Yeah, um, and uh, has. How's League Two? Is it? Are we going to League yeah. Two? Yeah, the, uh, the, <laughs> the real home th- football. Yep, the 2008 <laughs> FA Cup winners and 2010 runners up Portsmouth. Uh, how are they getting on? In We're 18th League at the moment, but we have got a game in hand that could take us all, all the way up to about 14th. Ooh, Ooh four places. Uh, <laughs> I think we're just happy to be in the league, to be honest. Yeah. Next, you finished bottom, didn't you? Like dead bottom in League One. Yeah, thanks yeah. to a points deduction. I mean, it's two inch for administration at a time, didn't you? So. We've had points deductions three, uh, yeah, three times, I think, in the last so four you started, So Did you start League Two on the negative points? No, we started on zero, because luckily ah, they took okay. it off last season, even though we were relegated anyway. Ah, that, that was but that something. something they'd already agreed with the league. Mm, yeah. So the fans now own the club. Uh, we've good. still got no money, but... At least we're up yeah, 48 have million in debt. Yeah. Uh, I guess the fans saying the club it. is better than having to face a 10 point deduction. And everything. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and the support's a lot better because the fans own the club. Yeah. Uh, getting average attendance of 16,000. I think we've got 14,000 season ticket holders. Wow. Which is massive the, uh, for that division. The famous uh, Portsmouth fan. I think his first name is John. I'm not too sure. Oh, the, the fat guy with the dread. Football Club <laughs> Westwood, yeah. Yeah, him, yeah. He's a. Yeah. I've been no. stuck behind him ringing his bell a few times. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and even even though you say 18th, it's always the way in kind of, you know, the championship down that even if you're 18th by the end of the season, you could well be in the playoff position. Like, it's always so tight. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're only <laughs> seven points off the playoff spots. So. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think the year Sunderland got promoted with Roy Keane, he took over when they were last. And they managed to win the league, you know, so there's always huge swings mm. in uh, all the football league divisions. So I think the a fans few... are losing faith with the manager a bit because... Um, uh, who is your manager at the moment? So Guy Whittingham. Guy so Whittingham. it's his first league job. I mean, he's an ex-player, so he's a legend at the club, but mm. he doesn't seem to be a brilliant manager. We've got a reasonable team considering we got them all on free transfers, but <laughs> they're playing a bit below themselves at the moment. Mm. So I think the manager's going to take the blame for that. But because the fans own the club, he's got a few more games to than he would normally. Yeah, that's a good thing about fans owning the club. They're a bit more... They're not as harsh or as brutal as actual like, owners. Uh, they're willing to give you know, players and managers time to adjust and get used to... That's it. They've got to take into club. account which person would take the job on anyway if we got yeah. rid of him, so... I'm sure I can't see any of them stepping in. It'd be funny to see, but like, cause if one plays FIFA and football management, like, oh, it'd be easy, but if they actually were put into that <laughs> situation, how would they handle it? 
Oh yeah, you got to be a good man manager as well as good oh, tactically. Yeah. You got to get on with players and know how to train as well. That's also a big uh, need. Um, so we're going to end on the football league and look to the World Cup next year because we didn't all the teams are now in place or thirty two have qualified. Well, thirty one because they were hosts. Um, we've got our eight teams in pot one, the CD teams. They are Brazil, Spain, Germany, Argentina, Colombia, Belgium, Uruguay, and Switzerland. Switzerland. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're seventh, they're, they're, seventh, they're seventh in the world. Today. Seventh in the world, Belgium's fifth. Not bad. We, England, the my England are tenth behind Italy and Netherlands. Yeah, well, I, I well, see, I say that for Switzerland because I think if in the second part is the likes of. France, Italy, England, uh, whoever else. I think they'll be quite happy if they end up with uh, the group with Switzerland as the top seed. So, if you think about the European teams that aren't seeded, they are like sort of Netherlands, Italy, England, Portugal, even Greece. They, the Greece are a pretty decent team in them, right? And yeah. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah, yeah. Russia United. Well, you Russia tops uh, Portugal in their group, so. I think we can just rename the Portugal team the Nation of Cristiano Ronaldo. There's another one one man team if ever there was. Yeah. Well, in England they'll end up getting drawn in a South American pool as well because they won't pull um two European teams together. Yeah, so that's basically Uruguay, Colombia, Argentina, uh, or Brazil. Yeah. If we get Uruguay or Colombia, they seem to be the weaker two out of the four teams that are there. Obviously, we I could always mind if we played we, Brazil. At least we wouldn't be playing at the back of beyond. Yeah, true. Yeah, be, you know, <laughs> near the coast in a mm. decent stadium. Yeah, not something we, uh, the jungle. We kindle our wife with Argentina. We love facing them and had some good battles in the past. Um, pot two would be full of, I think it's Oceania, of Asia and North American teams like they do in 2010 and Pot 3 would be the African and South American team with the other South American teams and Pot 4 would be the other European teams I think that's what they were looking to do right they did for the 2010 draw so but, uh, the draw would the pots will be announced on the 3rd of December and the actual draw itself is on the 6th of December a day to note down in your diary and we'll cover that on the podcast the, the uh, pots the draws and who we think will get through from the pots the draws even the groups I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> um, if you have any favourites like any dark horses or who do you think will win it in finals etc et um, I I think I'd like to see Argentina do well um and I see. So yeah, I don't know a lot of these international teams, especially the South Americans and stuff. Whenever they play, it's uh, you know it's one in the morning over here, so it's never usually something I watch. But um, I I know that recently they've found a system where Messi plays quite well, and he had his best I think international season um, in 2012, and uh, with the likes of Aguero coming into form, they've got such attacking options. You know, they've got Aguero and Tevez and Higuain. Um, Messi, Di Maria, Lavezzi, you know, you've got all these players. So I think if they find the right balance between attack and defence, um, they should have quite a good tournament. Obviously, Brazil are probably, Brazil, Spain, and maybe Germany are probably the outright favourites. Spain with the home, or Brazil with the home advantage. Um, Spain, reigning world and twice European champions. So. Mm-hmm. You can't look very further than um, the South American teams, but when they play against each other, it's anyone's game. I mean, Ecuador's in there, they qualified well, but that's probably on the back of a good home record because they play up the top of a mountain somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got <laughs> Colombia, Uruguay only got through on the playoffs. Chile with 12 in the um, world, so they're the universe show. I mean, they got Sanchez. No, yeah. no really rubbish teams in there. I mean, South America or Central American. Costa Rica and Honduras finished ahead of Mexico, so it's actually, they're not going to be that rubbish. Yeah, and Iran's like said, probably the Chilea, weakest minute. Chile, great toss, really. Yeah. 
Well, uh, I think Belgium will do well. They're mm. high in the rankings. I think they're going to be the dark horses. Of this Seeded team, so... Yeah. I think... I get the feeling that maybe one competition too soon for Belgium. I know they have like they have a great team, but it's also a young team, so... And this will be, you know, the first kind of tournament where there's been any kind of expectation on them, when you consider, like, the how well Lukaku and Benteke are playing, and then Hazard and all these other players, but I think maybe the, the Euros in uh, 2016 might be a better barometer of where yeah. they are and if they have a chance of winning. I want to see an uh, African team do well. I mean, Ghana got quite far last year until Shoreways cheated them out of the, uh, <laughs> out of the tournament. But yeah, like Ghana or Ivory Coast, I can see them doing quite well. Um, maybe even Nigeria, they've got a good team behind them as well. Yeah. Uh, Thierry Henry is a like a young team Ireland. now as well. Mm. What's that about Thierry Henry? If he's allowed to cheat Ireland out of a World Cup place, then uh, Suarez can go ahead and cheat Ghana out of one as well. <laughs> yeah. And we say that though, but like you know, your man had a had the penalty right afterwards. Penalty should be a uh, should stick that away. Uh, speaking of France, that's where the uh, 2016 Euros will be held. So yeah, okay. They had, a, they had a good comeback against um, that team they came back against. Ukraine. <laughs> Ukraine. Ukraine, Ukraine yeah. Ukraine. To be fair, though, they did cheat in that game. I think Ben Seamus, one of Ben Seamus' goals was offside, and they got they scored it. So. Ah, well, that that's up for the officials to see mm. offside or not. It's up to the officials to see handball. You know. There's a difference. <laughs> There's no exactly. difference. Well, it, well, it, it is. They do badly it, in it. Yeah, they did. They did see Suarez's handball, hence he got sent off. They didn't, however, see Henri's handball, hence. That's what, that's what, yeah, <laughs> I was saying about the uh, Henri's handball because you yeah. about the uh, Irish and the French. Um, oh well, I- Ireland have new managers. Manager, technically, we've got uh, Martin O'Neill with Roy Keane as a system manager. So, um, and I guess we we got off to a good start. We beat Lafayette. It was a Lafayette three 0 and then we got a nil all draw away against Poland. So um, that's not a bad start. So uh, hopefully we'll do well in the qualifiers for the Euros and we won't be embarrassed should we qualify. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens in two years. Um, let's now look to a, a segment called Films with Free. Or it's mainly TV and Films with Free. Um, anything new in the cinemas over the last two weeks, Steve, that you would recommend? Um, uh, I saw Gravity. I know I was only talking about it, having not seen it last time, but now I've seen it. I saw it twice. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's a great spectacle, you know. Like it, if you've been not really sold on 3D, which I haven't, and I'm still not fully sold, but uh, this has been the one film I've seen so far where you actually kind of appreciate the 3D and uh, the work that must have gone into making the film. But um, I didn't see it twice because it was completely amazing it was just to go i saw with uh my girlfriend the first time and then a bunch of friends the second time so uh, i didn't mind seeing it twice but um if you can see it in imax or i sense in the audience any of that kind of thing it does add to it so um yeah it's just great to see and it is tense you know like it's a pretty it's a literal edge of the seat type of film so um yeah it's well worth watching so and try and catch it in the cinemas i guess it it'll be good to see it on tv when it comes out, but you've only got really this chance to see it in the cinema the way it's meant to be seen. So uh, if you're wondering about what to go, I definitely recommend that. Um, I know we've also got the new big film out is uh, Hunger Games Two. Yes, I, I will be seeing that tomorrow. Um, more so for my girlfriend than myself. The the first one was fine actually. I think the first one might have been better than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be another kind of you know because it's a an adaptation of a teen series of novels and stuff, but um, even it's though there's an adaptation on Bat Wow, yeah, and even though there's the obligatory kind of a uh, love story, kind of love triangle going on in the thing, kind of the actual the concept of it, you know, these kids pitted against each other, and I think with the second film, it's uh, supposed to be a special commemorative games because there is a whole kind of political angle where. The reason the games are put on is to kind of cover up the fact that there's abuses going on in all these different districts. So, uh, kind of, there is a social commentary being made there about probably the entertainment that we watch covers up injustice in the world. So, 
stuff like that. Um, so I'll be seeing that tomorrow, so I, I can talk about that in a couple of weeks. Um, also, Don John, if anyone wants a bit of Scarlett Johansson. Um, hey. And lots of porn, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, there's, there's no other way to say it. It's it's not hardcore, you know, but there's lots of uh, T and A, I guess we'll say. But um, yeah, good, a solid first film from uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So there's something for the guys to look at, something for the girls to look at. So uh, yeah, it's about male male obsession with porn and how it kind of skews your ideas on romance and what you should expect from relationships. And then Scarlett Johansson's character is obsessed with romantic films, so she thinks guys should act in a certain way as well. So uh, there's kind of that kind of runs through the film. But um, yeah, it was good. It was fine. There was a few laughs to be had, and. Um, yeah, so that, that was worth seeing as well. Maybe guessing, catch that uh, one on. Guessing you think take uh, Aoife with that, to with that oh. one. Or did Pardon? You, did you take Aoife with you on that one? Or? Yeah, yeah, oh. I did indeed. So uh, she she wanted to see it perhaps more than I did. Um, <laughs> so, Definitely. but uh, yeah, there's there's quite a few films at the moment. There's not enough time to go through them all. In the world of TV, if anyone's watching Sons of Anarchy, uh, that needs a serious discussion. Big things have happened. I won't say what, but uh, the most recent episode, episode 11, um, it might be the second last episode of this season, but uh, something big happened. So uh, if anyone wants to discuss that, then uh, jump on the forums and I'll gladly yeah, have a chat. I know Aaron is a big fan of Sons of Anarchy, so you might want to tag him in a post and get chatting with him about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, The Walking Dead is going wrong. I haven't seen the most recent episode, but uh, the, the governor is involved again. I, sorry if I've just spoiled that, but it's not too much of a spoiler. He, any, anyone who's seen the last season knew that you know he was still around, so he was bound to come back at some point. You can't just fight a flu for an entire season. It's not really much of a an antagonist. So, um, yeah, so he's back. So I don't really like what they did with him in the episode again anyone wants to talk about it in the in the forums we can but uh, I don't know what kind of angle they're trying to get at with them but um, if they're trying to make me have any sympathy for them I really don't so yeah I didn't like what they did there but uh, we'll see what they do the next episode is uh, I think it's out tomorrow in America so you can download it I think after about 11pm mm. it usually goes up online so yeah there's threads for both Sons of Anarchy and The Walking Dead on the forum get chatting in there. Yeah, so everyone get chatting and uh, we'll see what everyone makes of the two of them. I've not uh, seen either of them. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any TV or films that you have watched recently by that you'd like to discuss on? Yeah. Um, Revolutions, the the one I'm watching at the moment, they're halfway through series two and it's uh, one of the best programs I've seen in a couple of years. It's um, sort of sci-fi. But it's uh, very clever what they've done. They're not afraid to kill off a main character halfway through, so you never know which way the plot's going to twist. Would you uh, uh, can you give like a little brief description of what what it's about? Or um, it starts off that all the electricity in the world goes off. Nothing electrical will work, so there's no transport other than horse and cart, or they get the odd steam engine working. No computers. <laughs> all the government collapses. And so militias take over and they end up with um, the USA split into about six different countries. Wow. So it goes back to like sort of like the Wild West. Mm. But some people know how to get the electricity back on and it's all about that and who's going to use the power against who and things like that. Very clever stuff. Seems to be one of those uh, new series that if you see the first few episodes you can get gripped by it. Uh, I'll need to get oh yeah, TV. absolutely. I mean, my other half wasn't bothered about um, the first series, so she didn't watch it. Watched the first one of series two with me, and that was it. She was hooked on it. This, this, this so. sounds like a recurring theme episode. with girlfriends. Yeah, I, feel I, I find it very difficult to uh, to get Eva into certain programs. Uh, with Sons of Anarchy, she just wouldn't at first. It was all, oh no, they're bikers and they do drugs and it's about guns and stuff like that, and then. I think I got up to season four by myself and uh, she watched the series finale episode and kind of went, oh, that actually wasn't so bad. And then I think by 
the end, like two weeks later, she had caught up. She had started from season one and watched all of them by herself. And it's now her favorite program. She loves it. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be a recurring thing. They just they need to give it a chance. And also listen to their boyfriends because we're always right. So, uh, we were the same <laughs> with Game of Thrones as well. And I got her uh, into yeah. it. Now with the third series, I had to stack them all on the hard drive so we could watch them all the way through because... Um, it was that good. She didn't want to wait a whole week until the next episode. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, with Game of Thrones, I because my girlfriend isn't so much into uh, Lord of the Rings, I, I did the mistake of describing it like, oh, it's like a slightly more adult Lord of the Rings maybe, and that put her off. But I think uh, she watched the fourth or fifth episode of Series 1 with me, and then we went back to Episode 1 and watched them all through. And, and now she's been reading the books as well. So definitely so get them with too. the one that Sean Bean gets killed in, and they'll be hooked. Yeah, the, that was that was heart wrenching. I hadn't read the books by that stage, but after seeing season one, I've read all the books, so I'm I'm fully up to date. So and actually, the next book's released next year sometime, uh, winter of something or other. <laughs> I can't remember the title, but uh, yeah, we should expect that. Would soon. you rather so, know what's uh, going we'll to happen? One book away from the end of the entire series. There you go. I think you need to repeat that question, boy. I say, would you rather know what's going to happen? Have you um, read the books I, first, or would you rather read yeah, well, watch the program first? I don't actually mind so much these days um, with books or with films as well, because I, I'm interested in working in films. I find myself reading a lot of film scripts as well, yeah. so I pretty much know the plots of entire films before they're released. You know, I had the the script to Captain Phillips before it came out in the cinemas. And so I've kind of, I'm able to separate reading the script, but then I still enjoy the film when I see it and see how it Steve disappears, it seems. Uh, broken up. Yep. Stay me, Skype. Um, I was going to say, the uh, the next book, I'm guessing it's book six, is called The Winds of Winter. Um, I'm not a Game of Thrones guy. I need to get into TV. I don't watch much TV. I don't know why, but there's plenty of series out there I need to get into that I just don't watch, but... Yeah, I've plenty of time on my hands. Get hold of the DVD or download it in one go. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of things on YouTube that I can probably watch it as well. As well. People pop TVs all the time, like TV series and episodes all the time. So I need just to set myself down and be like, let me, let me try this and then see how it goes. Um, That's it. If you've got things like Sky as well, you can get the whole series all in one go. I do have Sky, so. Yeah. Yeah, I do need to. Uh, Gone to that. Uh, no, no, Steve's gone. Steve has gone. Let me ring him. I'm calling him back. He's probably busy. Oh, Skype, what are you doing to us? Um, uh, this is stupid. It's damn you, Skype. He's currently busy. I don't know why. He's disappeared. Okay. Um, yeah, Skype's being a bit of a at the moment. Uh, being in Steve back now, um, we need to finish as well. We've only got this little bit in the interview left. Um, we have an hour and 18 minutes. This podcast is getting longer and longer. It's good. Nice to get us talking. Yeah, Steve, cut out there. What happened? I was gone. How, how long was I talking by myself to nobody? <laughs> About 30 seconds, probably, maybe. Okay, that's okay. I'm sure I was rambling towards the end. But, uh, yeah, the audience would have switched off after 15 seconds anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, general the book's called The Winds of Winter. The Winds of Maybe. Winter, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, general point was I can read stuff and know what's going to happen and still enjoy watching it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that saves a lot of time. Um, yeah. That says the uh, last DC interview. Uh, only two questions, Sir Boy. Uh, disappointed. Good. People yeah. slack him. Oh, no. What's this? Two the questions, or the maybe they already you know, know everything what? about me. That could be. <laughs> you're, quite, you're very revealing. Um, uh, Steve, I'll ask you the first question as always. Uh, uh, this comes from Master KK. 
and he says in a few words, brackets, short words, how would you describe Marcus? Uh, jovial. <laughs> uh, just the one word. Yeah. Hot-headed. Oh. Uh, but we like him for it. Mm. Fair enough. Um, and the second question, and the last question, is from Notto. <laughs> and he asks, who do you hate playing against on FIFA? Uh, well, there's a few people that I hardly ever beat, like uh, Dan and Aaron. I don't think many uh, people beat Dan, that's okay. <laughs> I did, well, until this season, I hated playing Gazgrass, because it was always such a slog to try and get anything out of him. But um, I'd sort of managed to win now and again. But you'd think, why can't I beat him when other people are in the league? But... <laughs> It must be um, similar styles of play we've got. But this season we've had some really good games and I've enjoyed it. So There's no one I hate playing now, as long as they're not negative. But no one does that all the time anyway. No, true. More 99% of the time fair and positive and, you know, good game, etc., etc. Et so. yeah, I think against Gavin, yeah, it's a good... frustration on my part. Yeah, you always get that kind of, there's one or two players... You feel you you should be able to get the better of yeah, every now and then. It just, them out. Yeah, it just doesn't happen for one reason or another. Or you probably go into it thinking that, oh yeah, I should definitely win this game. And then once you concede a goal, you start playing differently to how you would have. Otherwise, you, you try too hard maybe to get that goal you back go to attacking and you yeah, at the back. Yeah, I find. And you're like, oh. Yeah, I find when I can see it, if, if I get annoyed, I can start to play too direct, whereas usually I'm quite kind of patient, and I don't mind, you know, if I kind of get it towards the box, if I find my roots blocked, I don't mind passing backwards, but I think that when I go a goal down, I can tend to try and force it, which just plays into, whoever you're playing against plays into their hands, because it's easier to defend, because you're trying some kind of miracle pass or goal that just isn't going to work. I see, it's very rare that I go into a game expecting to win it anyway. I mean, that's I'm <laughs> third from bottom of the ladder. So. You should have confidence. Uh, I remember, our, I think our first ever game was something stupid, like undeserved. Was it like 8-1 or something like that? And it's sorry to bring up bad memories. <laughs> but um, I think the next match after that, you went to a 4-1, 2-1-2, and it seemed to suit you a lot better, and all our games have been close. Since then, like there's been nothing like that first match. So yeah, I mean, I found um, FIFA 14 more suited than 13 to the way I play. Anyway, yeah, I mean, a week into the game, I was second on the ladder, but then obviously everybody else figured out how to play it. <laughs> FIFA 14 yeah. must be very unpredictable. It seems to be every game can either can go either way. Yeah. yeah. So the ladder's unpredictable as well. I was first for all of, uh, I think, 20 minutes or so until I lost my next game, and then I immediately went down to eighth place or something, so it's hard to stay. I think I'm currently top at the moment. But I've got to put games with few through, so yeah, might drop me down to second or third. uh, I'm happy where I am near the bottom. I mean, when the Fantasy League starts, I'll get a decent um, draw on getting the players, so... In the course of the monthly tournaments as well, I always get a better team. Yeah, because I'm snuffy with teams like Coco. Yep. <laughs> damn, you, damn you, Dan. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, I've got more questions for you, Brian. Uh, no community, problem. Community. Obviously, uh, know everything they need to know about you. That's it. I'll remain a man of mystery then. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've, we've actually got... Well... We look to have our next guest scheduled. It's uh, well so He should be okay for the next podcast. But I'll confirm that in a PM if he is or not. So get your questions prepared. Um, do you have any questions for Bryce, D? Um, I'm sure we could ask you loads of things. What do you do? Are, are you a working man? I am. Well, I'm off sick at the moment with a back injury, ah. but... I work for a printing company. Who we um, make magazines, brochures, catalogues. It's not uh, I work there on the shop floor, operating machinery. It's not future publishing, is it? 
we make all the crappy women's magazines at uh, our place. <laughs> you know, we've got different buildings around the country, but it's all stuff like uh, Women's Weekly and Take oh. a Break magazine and all that type of crap, as well as Argos catalogs oh. and all that. My mum buys Take a Break. So, yeah. Sometimes she she tends to leave it in the kitchen, you know, because she does like all the the crosswords and stuff. And then sometimes you're walking by, and some of the stories you can't just help but read. You know, it's like, oh, my ex boyfriend ate our baby, and <laughs> all this it's crazy sort of stuff. And you're like, well, what is this? Or it's like, yeah, they've had horrifying accidents, or their boyfriends yeah. have tried to kill them or cheated on them. I think and women read it, so they are, think, oh, I'm having a crap day, but. At least I'm not as bad as her. That's like Jeremy Cole. Yeah. They're yeah, and also, Jeremy Cole, sorry. also at the end of the stories, it, it always uh, nicely informs you that if you write in and your story gets picked, they pay you like two hundred and fifty pounds or something like that. So you got to send in all the pictures and stuff as well, though. So like, I used to be really fat, and now I'm even fatter. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you send in like pictures of before and now and stuff, and there's all these beach whales sitting in the Costa del Sol. Like scoffing fifty burgers and stuff. That's it, and you've got to have a picture of you at the end, sat there looking gloomy. Yeah, and and sometimes the stories are awful. You, you think these type of magazines are all about kind of oh, there was something bad that happened in my life, and then I managed to overcome it, and now things are great. But sometimes it's kind of like oh, my whole family got swept away in a typhoon, and now I want to kill myself. And then there's a and picture of my looking, arm and my white leg. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, oh, it's some awful stuff. And it's like, why do you want to tell everybody this? There's like some desperate need for everyone because to just... you get a nice paycheck at the end of it, Steve, or a chance of getting a nice paycheck at the end of it. Yeah, are you just going to spend the £250 on a sturdier rope? <laughs> 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 That's a bit uh, bleak, isn't it? <laughs> I think, uh, think we'll leave that podcast there. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> um, Sorry, guys. Uh, uh, thanks, boy, for joining us on uh, episode 7. Pleasure. Much. Uh, thank you, co-host, for uh, ending us our, our podcast, <laughs> and possibly the uh, one of our podcasts on that. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to end conversations. Yeah, um, uh, I'll be uh, AG. I'm looking for a new co-host. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, um, I'm sure there's plenty of uh, you know one of those funny jokes that you shouldn't laugh at, but have to because. Here, we, we had we had Magoo on here a while ago. If anyone heard his joke, I won't repeat it. Yeah. But it was it nine out of ten way. people. Yeah, we yeah. all remember. Yeah, everyone needs a sense of humour. Exactly. Yeah. And we all jokes. Had the, That's all, all it is. We all that was here. We're not gonna moan about <laughs> it. So you know. Oh, Wayne's an adult now because it was Wayne's birthday and he's twenty-one. Hey, Yay. welcome to. Okay, that was his birthday on Saturday, so uh, happy birthday to you. Actually, it was yesterday. Sunday, yeah, it was Sunday. Party was Saturday, birthday yeah. Sunday. So now you're 21, so uh, enjoy the rest of your life. Yeah, I'll can now enjoy the things legally that I used to do illegally at a younger age. Uh, yeah, you can go to America and get locked now. So. Yeah, that's it, yeah, I can just go to America and get locked. So there's so not a lot you can do at 21 now, is there? No, yeah, you here. In America, do most yeah. of it. Yeah, you can go to America and you can gamble and drink and get a hooker all in the same evening. So, enjoy. Well, you can go to America and get bummed as well, but <laughs> oh, yeah. if you want to choose to do it, <laughs> you can do it all. Yep. It's up to you. The world is your... Do it all at once. <laughs> no, that would be a story to tell. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll leave that story in Dreamland for the moment and uh, end this podcast before we start telling... More inappropriate jokes, or talk about discussing your perfect holiday of getting bombed in the arse while drinking, gambling, and having sex with a hooker. I would like two out of three of those things, but I won't say which two. <laughs> I have an idea, no you need to be. So, uh, Actually, I, I don't drink alcohol, so that probably narrows it down a tiny yeah. I know, I'd offer I know. to join you on that holiday, but I haven't got a passport at the moment, so <laughs> uh, I'll have okay. to give it a miss. I know you like your poker, Steve, so that's one, but... That's part of the joy is you can smuggle you over. There is another thing. Well, actually, you don't need to be 21 to smuggle people into a country, but uh, probably helps. You just need to be Mexican. <laughs> well, for me, you'd need a very large suitcase. Yeah. Maybe the three of us should just never go to Las Vegas together. That, yeah. that will solve a, a lot of problems. <laughs> so a, if one and AG will save our money up in a few years, we'll all go to Vegas, have a good last night out, and... 
no doubt some of us will probably end up getting arrested. I'm still yeah, everyone... a sweet steak on who makes it back. <laughs> everyone donate a £1,000 to the site, but yeah. instead of Marcus spending it on server costs, he can just hold it for us all, and uh, we'll all set up a trip. Even not even Vegas, you can go to Atlantic City and gamble there. It's not as classy, but uh, it's probably cheaper. We'll have a raffle to see who makes bail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll use the auction to uh, scoot off a drug and get out a free jail card. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah right. our, our, our fake currency breaks out into the real world. We're yeah. like, well, we've got some scudo. The police are like, okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that okay. Sounds, sounds like it's worth a lot. Like it is. I bet 50 scudo on, on a black 21. <laughs> I don't know if everyone's black or red, but... So you get arrested for laundering Scudo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've put in a very much thought into this. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for listening to episode seven. Um, it's, it's, I promise you we, we are not drunk or high after the last like, five or ten minutes of this point, off this episode. Um, we'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you for joining us and adios. See you guys. Bye now.